Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for June 17th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Scott, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to, AD, a, to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on, on Mondays at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes talk, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We will also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you want to receive those notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's a notes doc that accompanies the meeting and the recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev ch channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes to the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news. This looks at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. We've chosen a set of items from our My Python on Microcontrollers newsletter uh, to discuss or to read over. Uh, the second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from our status updates. The third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to report on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. The fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. That covers how the meeting will go. Uh, with that, I'll switch docs and read the community news. Okay, so community news. Uh, first item here, uh, this is a, a preview of the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter that comes out every Monday morning. Um, first up, we have uh, Raspberry Pi is now a public company. Uh, Raspberry Pi is now a public company. The company's shares popped 32% after its IPO pricing on the London Stock Exchange. Um, there's links there. Thank you, Foamy Guy, for posting them in the chats for TechCrunch and CNBC. Um, note that retail investors can't buy Raspberry Pi shares just yet, as only certain institutional shareholders can trade the company's shares right now. Retail investors will be able to buy and sell shares starting on June 14th, um, which actually was in the past, so they, you can buy them now. Next up, uh, there's a new book, uh, Programming the ESP32, Learn MicroPython Coding and Electronics. Um, it is by Dr. Simon Monk and is available on drmonk.com and Amazon US. This book is two-thirds MicroPython programming, which applies to the ESP32 board and one-third electronics using solder, solderless breadboards. When it comes to the, ele the electronics side of things, I provide breadboard layouts for two of the most popular ESP32 boards, the ESP32 Lite and the DevKit 1. And that's it for items from the newsletter. Uh, the Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at www.adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft, edit next week's draft on GitHub. Um, github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython dash weekly dash newsletter. Look for the drafts folder there and submit a pull request with your changes. You may also uh, email cpnews at adafruit.com or tag a post with hashtag circuitpython on mastodon, blue sky, or x. Next up, we have the state of circuitpython libraries in Blinka. 
this is a subject or an object of view of the statistical view of the state of the project um, with the goal of kind of grounding us in some numbers that we've decided uh, are interesting. Uh, first, I'll go overall and then I'll go into the core. So overall, we had 22 pull requests merged um, from 14 different authors. Um, John John, who's in the chat, is a new uh, author, so thanks to them. Uh, Samantha's Fox, I Like Cake, Pure Panty, um, EA Graham Jr., Carl FL, uh, Nop Nop 2002, Bablock B are all infrequent authors, so thanks to them. Uh, we had nine reviewers supporting those 14 authors uh, for the 22 pull requests, um, thanks to uh, all of those folks um, who did the reviews. Uh, issues wise, overall, we had 15 closed issues by eight people and 22 opened by 19 people. So lots of folks involved and uh, net up on issues. Uh, next, I'll talk about the C core of CircuitPython. Um, this is the uh, kind of virtual machine that runs on the device, um, not the libraries or Blinka, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, so stats for the core, uh, we had five pull requests merged from four different authors and four reviewers. Um, we had 27 open pull requests, so we're slightly over our one-page goal of 25. Um, many, many of these are old, and I think we should probably just close them. Um, we have seven closed issues by four people and 13 opened by 11 people, so we're net up six. Um, and it's nice to see us hitting double digits on, uh, in terms of folks that are involved. Um, we have a total of 689 open issues, and we used milestones to prioritize work for the Adafruit funded folks that work on CircuitPython. Um, we have, uh, our, our current kind of goal is to release 9.1, which will be the next feature release for nine, the 90 series. Um, we have eight open issues there. That number is up quite a lot, and I think Dan will get into why. <laughs> I'm, I'm the reason why, but uh, you know. Uh, that's our main goal right now. Um, other than that, uh, we have zero issues not assigned milestone, so we're keeping up on triage. Uh, with that, let's uh, ask Foamy Guy to cover the stats for the libraries. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Uh, this section covers all the CircuitPython libraries, which you will find listed on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Uh, these tend to be either um, driver libraries that help you interact with some particular piece of hardware or helper libraries that allow you to uh, code your product project at a bit of a higher level without worrying about as many of the minute details involved in some of this stuff. Uh, across all those libraries this week, we had 12 pull requests merged by nine authors. Uh, the names on here echoing uh, some of the ones that Scott mentioned, which are uh, either newer or less frequent to me, uh, to my eye, uh, were John uh, No J, Samantha's Fox, I Like Cake, uh, Purple Penny, um, e. A. Graham Jr., uh, Carl F. L. So thanks to those folks again who are perhaps newer or less frequent or, or just have names that I didn't recognize this week. Uh, thank you to all of our other authors as well. We had five reviewers this week, so thanks to them. Uh, Liz, Lydiata, Dan, Tectric, and myself, thanks to our reviewers. Of the, pull, of the uh, merged pull requests, I should say, this week, the oldest one was pretty old, 570 days old. Uh, there were a couple of others up there in the 50-day range, and then the newest ones, uh, like most weeks, were just a single day old. Um, that leaves us after the week with 52 pull requests open across these libraries. Uh, the oldest one is a draft at 669 days. The newest one is uh, listed at four days, uh, which makes me wonder if the report was running, so we'll check into that later. Um, over the past seven days, we had six issues closed by five people, with six new issues opened up by five people, so we're uh, net even on issues. That leaves us with 856 open issues across all these libraries, and there are 103 of those that are labeled good first issues, uh, which you would be able to find listed over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is where you should head if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython. Uh, on that page, you're going to find a list of open PRs and open issues. Uh, if you are looking to get started contributing, you can uh, take a look through the open PRs, find something that is either interesting to you or that you've got the hardware 
um, to test and go ahead and click through over to GitHub, take a look at the changes in the code, um, test it out. If you do have the, car the uh, hardware for it, leave a comment on GitHub, let us know how it went, what you saw, uh, what you see inside the code, all of that sort of stuff. And um, once you get comfortable doing that, we can get you leveled up to leave official uh, reviews as well, but those uh, comments are truly just as helpful. Um, if you are looking to get uh, your hands dirty with some actual coding, you can click over to the issues tab where you can find a list of the open issues. There is a drop down at the top to filter them if you do want to find those ones labeled good first issue, which have been identified as um, you know less complex, a little bit easier perhaps, or smaller in scope, uh, better for folks who maybe don't have as much experience with uh, programming yet. So um, that's where you can find those. We do have guides for contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. So if you uh, are looking to tackle one of those issues, but you don't have experience with uh, version control like Git or GitHub, we have a guide that will walk you through the process of contributing your code. We also have folks who are around throughout the week on Discord who are uh, more than willing and happy to help folks uh, who are trying to get involved. So if you are trying to contribute and you need help with any part of it, um, check out the guides and uh, come join us on Discord. Ask questions over there. Um, most likely there's going to be someone who's happy to help you uh, help you along. We want folks to be able to contribute uh, no matter what their background or skill level is, uh, all that sort of stuff. We got kind of uh, opportunities for everyone. Uh, in terms of library uh, PyPI download stats for the week, there were 148,707 uh, PyPI downloads across these 327 libraries. The top 10 list is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take a look, as well as the list of uh, ones updated in the last seven days, which I won't uh, read for now. Um, and that's what we've got for libraries. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. Uh, next up, let's ask Maker Melissa to read the Blinka section. Hello. Um, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. This week we had five pull requests merged by two authors and one reviewer. There are currently four open pull requests amongst all the repositories. There were two closed issues by two people and three open by three people, leaving um, a net of 101 open issues. There were 16,664 PyPI downloads in the last week, 17,349 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 133 boards. That's it. Thanks, Melissa. All right, and that's it for the state of CircuitPython uh, libraries and Blinka. Next up, we're going to go to Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity for us to thank the folks in our community for doing awesome things. This is both good to give folks the recognition that they uh, deserve and reinforce what we value within our community, our CircuitPython community. Uh, this is done as a round robin, so I will start and then go through the list of folks. Uh, that are listed in the notes doc. Um, so if you do want to participate, um, one, you'll need to be a CircuitPythonista, and two, you'll want to drop your name and likely notes into the hug report. Um, if you don't want to speak, you're still welcome to drop your notes in that notes doc um, if, if you want to do that. So uh, I'll start and we'll go through the list. So I have two hug reports. Uh, first, thanks to Dan for helping debug ESP BLE issues. Um, this is a big thing that I got in last week, and uh, we've some other folks immediately found some bugs, so thanks to Dan for helping fix those. And then also thanks to Foamy Guy for covering the deep dives while I'm out both last week and this week. Next up is Dan. Thanks. Okay, uh, thanks to Jeff, who has been working on several different kinds of infrastructure issues, which are quality of life kinds of things. So thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Dan. And now we have Foamy Guy. All right, uh, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to Tyeth, uh, who suggested some good ideas um, when I was working through BLE workflow uh, integration on the stream, as well as pointing me towards the Nordic uh, mobile app, which I didn't know about, which made it uh, easier to troubleshoot some of the uh, issues I was having, or really just BLE devices in general. Um, thanks to Jeff uh, for working on the audio streaming support. Uh, that's looking uh, really cool. I'm excited to play with it, and uh, group hug for everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Foamy Guy. Next up is Jepler. Hello. Uh, so I wanted to thank Dan and Tectric for some pull request reviews over the weekend, as well as last week a review from Bill 88T that spotted a problem with a PR that I could correct before we merged it. Uh, Scott, thank you for running the meeting. And last, I have a group hug. 
Thanks, Jeff Boyer. Uh, next and last, we have Maker Melissa. Uh, I want to give a hug to Dan, Jeff, and you, Scott, for uh, help with figuring out uh, folder moving issues having in the in Circuit Python, and uh, hug to everyone else. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, that's it for Hug Reports. Um, we have a small group this week, and that's totally fine. Um, next up, we have status updates. This is a ch chance for us to briefly talk about what we've been working on in the past week and what we plan on working on in the coming week. It's done in the same format where the host starts, and then we go through the folks that are listed in the uh, notes doc. I will start, and uh, then we'll go through the list. Um, so I'm mostly out this week. That's the one thing I wanted to highlight. I'm here today, but pretty much out the rest of the week. Um, I have a pending PR for the ESP32 C6 deep sleep support. It actually is all the ESP's deep sleeps, um, but it's currently partially broken, and I want to try to get that uh, building today so I can get it checked in before I'm completely or, or more out than I already am. Uh, then next on my list are, I have an IMX RT 1011 Metro that has PS RAM bodged onto it, and I want to try to get that running. Um, that means that we'll have like way more RAM for the MicroPython heap that we could use on the 1011, um, just like the ESPs do. And then kind of this week, if I have some time, I'm planning on working on the IMX RT 1060 hardware design stuff. I think this is a higher... Um, chip in that family and it's just got it's got a meg of onboard P PS RAM or onboard SRAM um, so it's going to be super quick and have lots of RAM so I'm very keen on uh, getting some Adafruit shaped boards with that on it um, the TNC 4 0 and 4 1 that have been out for ages already have this chip so if you want to try CircuitPython on it now you can it's just not uh, quite Adafruitized for that um, and then I got the ESP BLE support in last week, but there are definitely bugs in it that Dan's helping run down. So uh, let's hand it over to Dan. That's a good segue. All right, thanks. Okay, so uh, last week there was only one or maybe two issues on the um, 910 milestone, but then when a bunch of people tried BLE, uh, some more appeared and a couple of other miscellaneous issues also showed up. So we're not quite to RC1 yet, but I'm making uh, good progress debugging uh, the BLE bugs. Um, the test things I'm, things I'm testing right now are a thermometer called the iBarbecue, which is a kind of, uses a kind of a standard. Um, there are many products that use the same protocol, kind of. Um, the heart rate monitor, which is completely standard. It's a defined standard by the Bluetooth organization. And uh, BLE UART, which was working and is now not working. And I have to figure out why. So I've I've already fixed a couple of bugs over the weekend and today, and uh, I'll do some testing and then try to fix the remaining bugs and get it in in one or more pull requests. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next up, we have Foamy Guy. All right. I uh, worked on the code for a game I'm calling Blink As Says, which is built into a cardboard box. Um, this week, I was working on not the core functionality, but sort of some embellishments. I added blinking animations when the game's getting ready to start, as well as scorekeeping and um, high scorekeeping by saving it in the MVM storage, as well as some quality of life stuff like making it um, have kind of a lockout time after you... Uh, lose the game so that you don't just immediately start a new game uh, if you weren't really intending to. Um, uh, this week I am uh, going to be working on the learn guide for this as well as a few other touches I have in mind for the code. Um, the other kind of major thing that I worked on over the last week was BLE integration into Circup and WW Shell. Um, I got over the first sort of hurdle that I was having, which was just getting connected. Uh, I was finding that I was getting kind of an instant disconnection as soon as it would try to discover the services. Uh, but I did eventually get uh, connected successfully and was able to read a couple of the version characteristics um, and then went on to trying the uh, listdir um, command through the BLE workflow. Uh, and what I found is I was ending up with an infinite loop while it's trying to read data through that connection. Um, all of this uh, so far was from the PC using Bleak and using Blinka BLEIO. Um, but uh, thinking that maybe the PC was somehow 
introducing some part of the problem, I uh, went back and reproduced the same thing using that BLE file transfer library um, just on microcontroller to microcontroller uh, to rule out the PC and bleak and everything involved. And I was able to see the same sort of infinite looping behavior. So uh, I'm going to dig into that further this week. Um, I Separate from that, I encountered and documented an issue with the itsy bitsy NRF52840, uh, where I was trying to up, update the, the bootloader. Uh, I had an old one that hadn't been updated in a while, and there was a version a little while back where it was no longer able to up update CircuitPython until you went and updated the bootloader. Uh, so I did that, but I was finding after I put the newest version of the bootloader on there, then uh, the CircuitPython load, it, it wouldn't like error out or anything, but it also didn't seem to work. After it got done, it just disconnected and never came back. Uh, so I wrote that up and tried a couple older versions until I found one that uh, allowed me to get it loaded. Um, I finished up, uh, or I should say followed up on a couple of older PRs and libraries that had some requested changes to, to carry out those changes and get them ready for merging. And then uh, finally, the, the last one for me, which I did earlier this morning, was update the PR for WW Shell uh, over in the Circup repo, repo in order to bring in all the changes um, to move that repo over to pyproject.toml from setup.py, which was merged. Uh, a week or two ago, and because this is kind of a new entry point, uh, it needed some updates in there, and it had merged conflict. So all of that is straightened out now, uh, and that's what I've got. Thanks. Nice. Okay. Um, I was just gonna say it's possible that the that the Python file transfer library has not been updated for like some slight changes that I've made to that API. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, maybe maybe compare it to the reference in the docs about what it's supposed to be doing, just to make sure that the list is right. Um, okay. Yep. I'm gonna. I'm also comparing to the J JavaScript implementation, uh, okay. which also belated hug report to Scott for pointing me towards the JavaScript implementation. Yeah, that that Melissa wrote. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Bomi guy. All right. Next up is Jepler. Hi again. Uh, so I wrapped up MP3 streaming, including going over HTTPS or secure URLs. That PR is merged. I will write a guide page on it on the next week or two that will cover some of the stuff like buffer sizes and, and a few other details that you have to know when streaming MP3s. Um, I did some updates to our GitHub Actions. GitHub has deprecated macOS 11 in their runners, so we can't run on macOS 11 anymore, which is what we specifically... Um, called for when building MPY cross for Macintosh folks. So newer MPY cross binaries may require Mac OS 12, which I think is pretty old and probably doesn't affect a lot of people. But if there's a way to be backwards compatible instead, I would love for you to show us how with a pull request. I don't know much about building a Mac OS software. I just know how to touch GitHub Actions. Uh, anyway, other stuff. This weekend, I was interested in uh, some, some things, and so I went and worked on them. And one was some work that I did I think at the end of last year to basically uh, before MPY compiling something to change the source to remove the overhead of type annotations by re basically recognizing them and literally removing them or putting them inside of a if zero branch or other things like that. So this can save small amount of RAM when MPY files are imported. Some modules have a lot of this like requests is a, a particular case where there is a lot of overhead from type annotations. A lot of other files have a very minimal overhead. Um, we also will want to take advantage of this when we freeze modules in, and that will mean adding a step to the circuit Python build process when there are frozen modules that will invoke this uh, script called munge, and that PR is open and waiting on some reviews. Also this weekend in circuit Python build tools, I created a script to wrap MPY cross. So uh, once this open PR is merged, there will be a command circuit Python MPY cross that you can say, I want to invoke MPY cross for version 9.x, and here are all the arguments. It will download that from the internet if you don't have it. It will build it if there's not a pre-built binary that works with your computer, and then it will MPY compile your stuff. And so this will be uh, good for people who want to be able to run MPY cross. And I have to thank some folks who did this for MicroPython in a slightly different way, but it's the same concept, just making something that can be installed with pip that lets you run MPY cross. And once that is merged, I also will need to update some Adafruit guides about that. Um, so I'd like to get those two things uh, taken care of. 
But the main thing that I'm working on this week is I'm looking at Zigbee on the ESP32C6. Uh, there's a series of demos including Light Switch and Light, and I've got those loaded on a couple of my devices, just C++ applications built with ESP IDF. And um, I'd like to make CircuitPython work as the light so that when a Zigbee compatible light switch says turn on, that CircuitPython can turn something on or off and uh, just see what is what is useful there, what would be a useful subset of Zigbee to put on a CircuitPython device. And I think that's probably plenty for a week, so I'll stop there. Thanks, Jepler. All right, last up we have Maker Melissa. Uh, hello. So I finished up the remaining file operations in the CircuitPython code editor over REPL. Um, I released an updated version of the JavaScript REPL library, and then I updated the code editor to automatically load the current file system API um, file operations if the root folder of the CircuitPython device is mounted read-only, and the REPL file operations if it isn't. Uh, this makes it so that you generally don't need to worry about dealing with uh, the files being mounted read-only. Um, I have a a pull request in for the CircuitPython code editor changes. Uh, I'll be out next week, uh, so I'm working on GitHub issues for the time being, but I'm also seeing if I can quickly add the Vivid unit to Blinka since the microcontroller has already been added. That's where I'm at. Sweet. Thank you, Melissa. I'm, I'm opening that thing up right now. Um, the Vivid unit. Uh, neat. Okay, uh, that's it for status updates. Um, next up is in the weeds, um, but there are no in the weeds topics, so we're gonna have a nice quick meeting today. Um, in the weeds generally is a chance for us to have any longer form discussions that folks have to have or that would like to have. Um, you would put them in the notes doc here and along with your name and the topic, and we'd talk about it right now. But we don't have anything uh, for that, so let's move on to the wrap up and i'm going to switch over to my notes for the wrap up this has been the circuit python weekly for june 17th 2024 thank you everybody who participated not only those participating live but listening to after the fact if you want to support adafruit and circuit python and those of us that work on circuit python consider purchasing from the adafruit shop at adafruit.com the video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that. The next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Thanks for whoever put that in the notes doc. Um, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Most of us th are there throughout the whole week. Uh, to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the, uh, the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. With that, we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.